Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat. The main talking points tonight, the SFA and Mike Ashley are all set for a court battle. Gordon Strachan is looking for answers to the reasons why we are in a slump at uh, domestic and international level here in uh. Scotland. And could Paul Lambert be set for a return to management down south? Just a few of the topics we will be discussing. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, our bootroom guest. I'm delighted to say is Peter McDonald, the Morton striker, although the one thing that uh, really is not good, Peter, is you've got another operation and it's operation number? Uh, nine on my right knee. Wow. Um, is there a point where you actually, I mean, is it the same injury consistently? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's cartilage damage, lateral side, so uh, I've got under the knife on Tuesday and hopefully it's just a if you clean up it's needed, yeah, but I won't know until I wake up, but I think I should be okay. Yeah, um, nine times Ruffy, that's, yeah. that's yeah. good going. Is there, a, is there a worry that, you know, as any doctor say to you in later life that type of thing will make it difficult for you? Yeah, I got told, I got told uh, to retire I'm 20, when I was 29, uh, not a lot of people know, and uh, I said to the, the surgeon, if I can't do the rehab then I will retire, and I managed to come through the rehab, so here's me still now. Uh, but no, if, if the day comes, it's going to come eventually. But no, I'm pretty confident. It's just a, a little cartilage clean up and I'll be back playing mid-January. Yeah. We spoke about it yesterday with uh, Robert Snodgrass, been out for 18 months, you know, and uh, the, the things that you have to deal with, and you'll know more than anybody uh, when you're not playing uh, mentally, what you go through uh, when, you're, when you're trying to get back as quick as you can. Yeah, it's, I think it's just the first four or five weeks when you can't do nothing, you know, it gets, gets you down and... But after that, the progress, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, like, oh, I'm running now, OK, I'm doing ball work now. Then, oh, I'm playing the 20s now. Then the next stage is obviously back first team. So it's, it's just got to keep positive. At times it's hard, but I've been through it, as I said, quite a few times. Yeah. I missed it. And is that what's driving you on, Peter? Is it, is it the, the, the love of the game and the fact that you can see the finish line in the career, but you're thinking, I'm just going to try and prolong it for as long as possible? I've been hanging in like a bat for a few years now, so... <laughs> So uh, we'll see how long I can continue. I feel I feel fit when I'm when, as in fitness wise, running about. But it's just the, the niggles that keep appearing as you get older. Uh, I'm pretty sure you you know that, Ruffy. But uh, I'll, I'll play as long as I can, uh, at a, and I'll try and play at the highest level for as long as I can. Then will come a time when, once I realise I can't do what I want to do to a certain level then that's the time to hang up the boots. Yeah, and, and prior to the injury, I mean, the thing that we noticed is still scoring goals. Um, <laughs> have you changed the game down to your experience and, of course, the fact that you, you, you sometimes protect the injuries? I think I'm not, I'm, I'm obviously not as, not as sharp and fast as what I was maybe five years ago, four years ago. Uh, you, know, you sort of need to adapt, so maybe I, I try and concentrate and take the ball in more, you know, and then releasing it, bring others, others into play, whereas... I'm not going to take you 50, 60 yards up the pitch. Uh, so I've sort of adapted it that way. But uh, no, as long as you stay in the box, I will always keep that in my head and try and get as many goals as I can from the box. Yeah, and it must be great having a manager who also has no knees. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only person I think in Scotland's in a worse state than me. <laughs> I mean, uh, if ever, I mean, and the manager, of course, Ruffy, you know, mm -hmm. lets the individual train when he wants because he knows his own body and that's the experience what Jim Duffy has. Yeah, I think that helps when you've got a manager who's been through that and, uh, you know, he can sympathise with what it's like and we saw it with Stephen McLean up at St Johnson, you know, yeah. he won't play in the AstroTurf no. and his manager quite rightly has said, right, if it's good for you, it's good for us, so they just got on with it. And you look at his performances so from that, you know, he's, he's banging in goals and it shows you, if he did play in the Astro, could he get injured and St Johnson are a major man down. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think, you know, for that long layoff to come back and score goals and he's a threat as well and he's he's one of the forum players. I think actually, uh, am I being out of uh, turn here, Ruffy suggesting that Michael O'Halloran is benefiting from the mm -hmm. graft that McLean's showing? Oh, as he'll tell you, you know, it's all about a team. Uh, mm -hmm. Two strikers, if you can read read each other inside out, you want to watch. And uh, that's what they two are like, you know, they complement each other. 
and uh, that's where they're getting all the success of it's at Johnson. Yeah, and I read today as well that Derek Riordan has been complimented by Jason Cummings, Ruffy, because he, he feels as if Riordan is, is giving him little golden nuggets of information that have made him better at finishing. That's amazing, you know, Derek Riordan, you know, that uh, he's been through it all, there's no doubt about it, and, and, and some young players can be influenced by these uh, players who've, who've went through it all and if they can help them, if they can soak in everything and, and learn just wee bits here and there and take it and move on, all the good. Yeah, I, I know Derek probably, it's the last thing he, he wants to hear, but he, he is one of those great enigmas, you know, that you, you, you just look at him and what he had and the talent that he had and, you know, and he's at an area now where no club's taking a, a gamble on him at all. It's a sad situation, you know. Uh, I think the only fortunate thing for uh, Derek is he's financially well off enough, or, or well he should be. Yeah. Uh, any player that I've spoke to who's played with him, I've all said the same thing, that he's the, the best finisher he's ever, they've ever seen. Well, I, I look at Lee Griffiths and I look at Derek Ryan, mm -hmm. and the two of them, are, for me, are similar. One has went one way and one has went the other way. The yeah, other, yeah. One of them could have went that way. Yeah. There, was a, there was a time that if he hadn't screwed the head, he could have been Derek Radden, but he, he, he hasn't. He's screwed the head and he's now getting the benefit of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just one other thing I, mean, I want to talk about Morton uh, as well this season and, and your hopes and ambitions, Peter. Um, just one other little newsworthy story. Uh, the SFA uh, and we're going to defend their position in court with Mike Ashley, who, um, as long as I get this correct, Rob, um, he is challenging Dave King's appointment at Rangers. Uh, this is obviously going to be heard on the 4th of February, but to Mike Ashley believes a judicial review of the de decision to pass Dave King as a fit and proper person needs to be called into question. And again, uh, Rangers need that type of thing like a hole in the head as well. But, you know, it, uh, we've discussed it ad nauseum on this programme. Mike Ashley's got money to burn. Yeah, this this unfortunately is now personal. You know, it's a, it's a personal crusade against one against the other. You know, both of them are upsetting each other. Both of them have got a lot of money behind them, uh, and that's where it is. You know, they're just trying to win uh, a notch off each other, and obviously it's hitting the courts. It's something Rangers, particularly the, the playing staff, won't want to read. And uh, unless it gets settled, it's going to drag on and on. Yeah. Um, what have you made of uh, the, the teams that you've been f you've been facing and the teams that you've watched Morton take on uh, this season, especially the top two, Peter? I think Rangers and Hibs. We, uh, Rangers are a class above the rest in this league. Uh, Hibs also are just just not quite at Rangers. I think I think Rangers will win the league fairly comfortably. Uh, we played Hibs at Easter Road at the start of the season. We lost one 0 but we set ourselves set ourselves up to defend, counter attack, and we were very hard to break down. Whereas we, we sort of did the same situation at Rangers at home, and it was four 0 you know, and it was four 0 going on a few more. Yeah. Uh, so I think the, the both teams' budgets are way above anything else in the league, so they should be where they are. Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday as well. It might come down to even, I mean, could it come down to the two games or could it come down to player recruitment in the January window? I think Rangers will spend in January, definitely. Uh, I think they'll set a marker as well uh, by a, a big signing. Well, a big signing now for Rangers could be, as it said in the papers today, the million pound signing. Uh, I think they've got the, they've got the, the scouting system Sort of on its on its uh, rolling, it's rolling now basically. Yeah. So I think they'll surprise everyone. Uh, whereas I don't think Hibs have got the the financial backing to go and spend two hundred grand. If you you know, but uh, no, I think it'd be, it'd be uh, big times in January, big changes as well at Ibrox. Yeah. If you had to pick, uh, obviously Rangers and Hibs, you think Rangers will win the title. If you had to pick two teams that you think are going to be in that playoff place, is it is it Falkirk and Wraith or is there an outsider? Morton and Yeah. No, I mean, no uh, ideally we're in a good position, like he says, uh, but it's a long way to go. There's a long, long way to go. In this, in this league, uh, three or four games can move you up three or four places. Yeah. 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 So, at the moment, Falkirk look strong. Uh, Rafe Rovers strong as well. But you always get these wee surprises where if they if they get any injuries, could it be beneficial to our teams? Which I'm pretty sure all the clubs will get their wee run injuries. Yeah. We, we've got a small squad. Uh, first and foremost, we just want to compete. And wherever that takes us in, 
think that'd be good. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about you, uh, Rafi, but I, I can see Jim uh, just taking his shoe off right now and, and he's throwing it at the telly as if to say, no, no, keep it a secret. <laughs> That's not no. our ambition, but they have the players. No, and uh, where they're sitting just now, the Jim will be quietly uh, not overconfident, but he'll be looking at the teams round about them. We'll know. I, I think now in that division, there's, there's only a fourth sp place available. I think I think the first three, I think Falkirk are playing well. So I think everybody else is going for that fourth place and I think everybody's got a chance. Yeah, OK. Um, we are going to talk more uh, to Peter McDonald about uh, the coaching aspect of his game. Uh, and over and above that, we will get uh, both guys' thoughts on Gordon Strachan looking for answers to our slump at domestic level and international football as well. It's coming up next. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. Our bootroom guest is Peter McDonald, the Morton striker, injured at the moment, but uh, hopefully back in time for Morton's assault on possibly that fourth position in the uh, playoffs at the top of the championship. And, and with that in mind, um, there's an international break for the top clubs in the Premiership, Peter. You guys uh, are in action, uh, Queen of the South, and then of course St Mirren on the horizon, which is always a nice, tasty affair. It is. It's a good. It's a good little derby. I'm not sure if you watched the the first derby. It was it was quality. It was good to play in. I've actually played in it. Uh, it was end to end stuff. You know, although it finished zero zero, uh, it was a, a top derby. And I think Stan Collum was actually commented on it, tweeted saying it was a a proper derby, and that's what it's all about. So it was nice to get a wee bit of publicity for the two clubs for that. Yeah, we, we had Ian Murray in, uh, the, uh, on the programme yesterday. Have you been surprised that St Mirren haven't hit the heights yet at the top end? He is adamant that they'll be in the mix as well. They've got a good squad, you know, so it's strange. Uh, but I think everyone who, who maybe goes to St Mirren could be maybe sitting in as well, other than the top, the top two, Rangers and Celtic, uh, Rangers and Hibsai. So they'll be hard to break down. Uh, but no, I'm pretty sure St Mirren will, will have, a, have a late run at it. Uh, as they've got a place to do so. Yeah, um, Ruffy, Gordon Strachan's mentioned that he's consulting a lot of elder statesmen, people who know all about the game. I'm not sure if you've no, had the phone, phone call yet. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's only a matter of days, I'm almost certain. Um, looking for answers to the yeah. slump. You could um, probably have I, a programme that lasted yeah. all day and all night. Yeah, I'm all for uh, people mm -hmm. looking at uh, ways and means to turn it around. Uh, but for me, uh, I think he's, he's on a hard one there because I think the clubs control everything. Uh, I think for me, it's all about young players getting games and that's up to the clubs who decide who's getting these games. It's not going to be up to Gordon. Gordon's remit, and it's a big remit. Uh, I think if we got to World Cup finals and European Cup finals, you know, we get the benefit of that as well. So that remit, if we could start doing that, we'd get more kids interested in playing football. There's, and uh, I just think it's, it's a hard one. It's a really hard one. As a professional footballer, and it's a tough one to call because you're doing coaching with uh, Partick Thistle's um, youngsters as well, Peter. Is it that we maybe don't have enough of a pull to call on that we once had, where you could maybe get a, a greater amount of players with technical ability, or is it maybe that we're not coaching um, to try and get a higher percentage of players with technical ability? Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many other reasons I could I could highlight, but I like to see skillful players. I, I think it started. Uh, I was 15. And I was. It went into the, the. I went from being boys club at Hullwood Boys Club to going with Rangers, and all of a sudden, all my life was about winning at Hullwood Boys Club. We won trophies and we went to tournaments to win tournaments. To have that taken away from you because you don't win anything. If you're playing every week and there's nothing at the end of it, yeah. I think you've got to get back to the roots where there's going to be winners, there's going to be losers, that's in everything. Where you've got to play all season and there's got to be something at the end of that season. And like, whether it be school, school level, boys club level, or pro youth. Yeah, you but, but I hear so yeah. many players condemn pro youth. So many people say that's what's wrong at one level of the game. Yeah, the, <laughs> There's different circumstances, you know, pro-youth, 
it's good for the amount of days they're getting proper coaching. Whereas boys club level, they're getting the proper coaching. But they're learning other aspects of the game. They're playing all the time. They're training every week. Uh, then they're training with the pro youth clubs. And the ones who are fortunate enough to have that bit, a bit of ability will make it. But I think, let's say, go back to let them play as much as they can. When I was a kid, I was playing every single day. Every day I was playing, if it was my mates in a church across the road with my mums, or I was playing boys club level with Hullwood Boys Club, then I was training with Rangers, I was training with Hearts. I was out six nights a week training, and uh, it did me no harm. Cause <laughs> I, <laughs> the point is, though, you're not alone. I mean, everybody right. at that point would have been doing yeah. that sort of thing. But yeah. I, was, I, was I, speaking, I was speaking to somebody this morning, and I don't know anything about boys' club football or the youth, because we're not out there. Yeah. We're not seeing what's getting done. But what what has this chap I was talking to the day, his main problem was that the people that are in the know are making decisions on kids at a certain age. Now, say 12 years of age, nobody's the same height. You know, yeah. kids, kids are not the same build. You know, and people are making decisions, oh, he's a big strapping mm -hmm. guy, you know, he looks as if he could be good. So the, the other guys aren't they getting the same. And so they're just being discarded, whereas in two or three years they could be as good as. That's still happening. Well, see, That's I don't see it under, I'm not under 17 yeah. level. Because the jump <coughs> from under 17 level is to under 20. And you're losing players to the game who are physically no, no good enough, big enough, sorry, yeah. but technically not, they're good enough, but you, you can't afford to wait for that three year for them to fill out. I and mean, we're losing that. There's some boys at Partick Thistle who are not physically ready to go 20s, but they've got the ability. And you want to put them forward for it, but you know thing well, they're going to get, they could get hurt. Yeah, so what's the answer? I think, truthfully, get it back to normal. You're winning, you're playing as kids to win. Then under 16s level, Go under 16s full time, under 18s, under 21. That's what I think. The, the, the difference is only two years rather than three or four years for the physical jump. So you can play under 18s for you, and the jump's only two years. The way, the, way, the way it was when I was growing up. And do you see a vast difference in, for example, you're coaching the under 17s? Do you see a vast difference in the technical technical ability of when you were a boy and what's, what's out there now? It's difficult to say. Uh, Physical. To now, there's only two or three who can maybe come in and hold their own, you know, whereas other ones who are, let's say, technically, they're just as good. Not at first team level, but they can see they could be, aspire to be that, you know? Yes. Uh, it's difficult, it's a, it's a tough one. I think, but I think the 17 to 21, the 20 age, age gap is too big. Yeah. So that's 16 to 20 year olds, and they're playing against first, five first team players can play in the 20s league. Yeah. So if you're 16, but a lot of people tell me, Peter, you know, the, the, the days of actually playing alongside men toughened you up, made you better players. You learned the ways of the experience that they had to pass mm -hmm. on. Well, I, that was the way I was brought up as well, because yeah. we went right into reserve football. And I wasn't ready to reserve football for 17. I was too too thin, you know. I'd maybe the, the technical ability and the goal scoring yeah. aspect, but you're sort of wary. You're, you know, you're running alongside a man, and he's just... Out the way, son. Yeah. Out the way again. You know, you're not you're not learning much from that. So your confidence can be dented rather exactly. than going into games looking forward to getting into it knowing If you go to 20 of reserve football, you're at the bottom of that level. I'll tell you, I wouldn't like to be Gordon Strack and taking... Tell me, phone me. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't like to be Gordon Strack and taking... <laughs> Peter. Uh, uh, you know, taking... You know, him yeah. and, uh, you know, he'll be there with Brian McClare. They'll be chatting about it. They'll have their own views on it as well. Then they'll go and maybe speak to Sir mm -hmm. Alex Ferguson. Then they'll go and speak to Craig Brown. You know, and then there's all sorts of Jim Fleeting will have his tuppence worth as well. It's, it's a nightmare. It is a nightmare, but if they all can get together and they all can come up with some kind of idea that will get us to progress uh, to finals, and not just the, the, the full international team, but the under-17s, yeah. if they could start going to finals and the under-19s going to finals, you're, you're getting players who are getting experience of sampling what it's like, the pressures of being there, then coming back to the clubs, and then the clubs get the benefit of it, and then they can progress into the international side. I, I watched the, the under-17 World Cup the other night, I don't know if you've seen it in Sky. Well, how much time have you got in your hands, by the I'd way? I'd be my mistake and put, it, <laughs> put a hand in. And it was uh, Nigeria. I didn't know that Nigeria had won the most under-17 World Cups, other than Brazil. 
Well, sorry, in fact, ahead of Brazil, Brazil was second. Yeah. Are you telling me that they've got better facilities than what we have? No chance. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I mean, I wish I, I wish I had the answer, but I don't envy anyone trying to look for the answers as well. I just, mm. uh, I just think we need to try and and develop more people with technical ability, uh, skill, the ability to, you know, beat men, produce something a wee bit different rather than what we've got at the moment. I mean, maybe maybe I'm looking back to halcyon days that will not mm -hmm. return to our country, Ruffy. Well, I mean, <coughs> I just keep looking, and I keep thinking as Gordon's come out there and said, right, I'm going to sit down and think that. Every club, Jim Duffy will think his training's good. Mm -hmm. Patrick Thistle will think their training's good. Motherwell yeah. will say, we're training kids, we're doing everything, you know, so there's something else. Yeah. Something needs to come up. And because I, be I believe the SFA have been having their development coaches having everywhere yeah. coaching. Somebody has to come up with the, the right idea. Uh, just to finish, uh, Ruffy, uh, Paul Lambert tops yeah. the Blackburn Rovers list. It'd be nice to see him getting back in. He's been out too long. Yes, and uh, we spoke about it. You know, we spoke about managers believing in their own ability and just waiting until the right uh, club comes up. And if that's the one he fancies, he must be in with a good shout. But there'll be a lot of other guys on that list as well. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had Paul on the show. Um, we wish him the very best, as we do uh, Peter McDonald. Um, in fact, we might as well get a competition to see if you can win the last of his cartilage left in his knee. Um, <laughs> at nine operations. Um, but it's the love of football that keeps him going, and we hope he gets back playing uh, very soon for Morton. Don't forget, Gordon, give him a call. He's available. From Ruffy, Peter McDonald and myself, thanks for watching. Good night.